Make sure you check out the end of this video for a really big surprise. Oh, and it's after the tiny end credits. So make sure you stick around after that. Hey everybody, I am the one, the only, Tidy 80s Guy, and welcome to episode 7 of Tiny Tie Talk. I wore this Hawaiian shirt again in honor of the first episode of Louis Flewis. That was Video World Episode 3, Louis Flewis and the Blues. And I also wore the same shirt in parts of the Blue Time and Adventure. This isn't just the seventh episode of this series, it is also the not-so-tiny season finale. The first ever season finale of Tiny Tie Talk. By not so tiny, I mean that instead of the usual 5 to 10 minutes that the episodes of this series gets, you'll be getting between 10 and 20 minutes. And I've got a great surprise that I've been hiding from everybody. That big surprise is that this episode is actually The Blue Diamond Adventure, Part 6. So yes, I tricked everybody. <laughs> and I really hope that you enjoy the true final chapter of this epic adventure. <laughs> I know how many of you really did not like the Blue Time and Adventure. <laughs> so I decided to play this big prank on you. <laughs> yep, that joke was for you, G. Hamsacker and S. Potter, because I know how much you two were annoyed by the blue time and adventure because it was just way too long for you. Gee, you can be Super Mario Mario! Yeah! Yeah! Woohoo! Yippee! <laughs> and S, you can be Louis Flores the Flying Harmonica Fish! Hey there, I'm Louis Flores the Flying Harmonica Fish! <laughs> no, 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 no! Please don't throw moldy cheese at me as a tribute to Steve Urkel. <laughs> there really is no part six of the Blue Time and Adventure. But instead, this is the making of the Blue Diamond Adventure. By D making, I mean D grade level of filmmaking for the Blue Diamond Adventure. It's not a B movie. <laughs> it is a D movie. That's how all the filmmaking has been for Video World and Tiny Tie Talk. When you've got a really cheap six dollar Chinese camera yes I ordered it off of Amazon you're not going to get a super HD quality A plus experience so now on to the making of the Blue Diamond Adventure the origins of the Blue Diamond Adventure date back to the early 2000s when I was attending Caldwell Community College and Technical Institute in the small town of Hudson, North Carolina. Hudson was where my late great mom lived and the town was located about five minutes driving distance from here in Granite Falls. I'm thinking that it was 2003 in the spring semester. Maybe it was fall. I really can't remember completely. I was taking one of my art courses and the assignment was to do a painting that told a story. 
so I decided to write the mystery of the Blue Diamond Crater. At least that's what I think it was called. The short story was about a grandson in his early 20s who was in search of his grandpa who had gone missing in the Bermuda Triangle in an area of the Triangle known as the Blue Diamond Desert. The Trichorgolutus was still the sea monster in this story too. Originally with this Trichorgolutus it was a big I think black pyramid with a lot of eyes and black tentacles that came out of it. At the bottom of the crater with the Trichorgolutus was the La Baena Rica legendary lost treasure ship which in Spanish meant the wealthy well. Though it was a short story I broke it down into several chapters. That way it would be a lot easier for me to read and anybody else who wanted to read it. The story turned out very good but the painting didn't. It wasn't horrible but it was still pretty messy. The acrylic painting had the Trichorgolutus and the La Baena Rica and a bunch of seaweed and stuff all over the ocean floor and it just it was just a muddy mess. I'm pretty sure that I remember getting an A on the project but after that I was still far from done with the mystery of the Blue Diamond Crater. I had been fascinated with the mysteries of the Bermuda Triangle ever since I was a little kid. Atlantis, sea monsters, aliens, whatever was going on there and the mysteries are still unsolved to this day. Scientists have come up with different ideas but there is no definite explanation for all the disappearances and all the crazy stuff that happens there. I decided to take this great fascination of the Bermuda Triangle with this short story and turn it into my very first novel. The final title would be the Trestori Triangle Trio and I think the rest of the title was the mystery of the Blue Diamond Desert or the Blue Diamond Crater or something like that I can't remember. I worked on it for months and months maybe a year I can't remember exactly and I had over 50 or 60 or 70 pages I like I said it's been years you know, I, we're talking 2003 since I wrote this and I couldn't remember how many pages I did. It was going really well too and I was confident that you know, I could turn this into a novel and maybe one day get it published. I spent a lot of time in the computer lab after my college classes were done for the day just to sit there and type my book. But one day when I was in my bedroom at Dad's house, that was back when I lived with him after I had moved out of my mom's house because me and my mom were not getting along at the time. I believe a storm knocked the power off. The power of my PC got knocked off with my memory stick in it. When I turned it back on, I could not get my file to load and I did not have a backup. Zero backup. I took it to a store in town called Lutronics and the owner Ralph he tried really hard to get it to come back up and he just couldn't do it. So I lost my entire novel. I was so sad. I, I screamed and I shouted and I cussed over and over and over again. And I was depressed for days and from then on I didn't write anymore. After that I got more interested and video games on the Wii and 80's music and DS games and I didn't want to write. 
Then in 2007, I finally decided to do some more writing. And it was nothing to do on the Bermuda Triangle. Instead, it would be a horror short story. I've enjoyed scary stuff ever since I was a little kid. Not so much the scary movies until I got older, though, in college. Well, I had my first taste of scary TV with Are You Afraid of the Dark on 90's Nickelodeon! Yay! But this horror short story would be called Brellerfeller. But instead of a short story, it grew longer and longer and longer until I decided to turn it into another novel attempt. I had finished my first draft in November of 2007. But as time went on, in 2008 I lost the whole book and I had to retype it with the manuscript I already had printed up of everything so far. Yeah, it took a long time. But I also made many changes over the next couple years and I just grew happier and happier with it. And then finally I was ready to release it in 2010. I went through the self-publishing company known as Create Space and here it is. Brellerfeller by Tyler N. Nix. Over 300 pages of not so family friendly fun. October 21st, 2010 was when it was published. I've sold over a hundred or so, but it has not been really successful. Then on March 25th, 2013, when my mom passed away, I did not want to write any sequels to this book. Because the plan was to do two more sequels, and that was going to be it. I had even already started the second book. But after my mom passed away, I decided to focus on a lot more positive things. So I started up an 80s and 90s group on Facebook and eventually a couple years later here in 2016 about March I decided I am going to figure out how to make my own series on the 80s and 90s so tie to 80s guys 80s and 90s video world was finally born it had been one of my dreams ever since I was a kid to have my own TV show and finally it was going to happen before I continue on I want to make one quick note it says that I had stopped writing the Bermuda Triangle novel you know the mystery of the blue diamond desert in August 2007 I think that was probably just the date that I thought it was because I really can't remember when exactly it crashed and I lost everything on that book I think it was probably around that time but next I'm gonna give you my overall opinion of what I thought of the entirety of the blue time and adventure then we are going to look at a lot of props from that epic five parter then that'll be it when I mean D-level quality filmmaking I mean extremely cheap and extremely low budget. But so far the Blue Time and Adventure has been the most expensive series of episodes that I've made. It has cost me about a hundred dollars for all the props that I bought to use. This was the first co-starring role of Louis Flores the Flying Harmonica Fish. I wanted to show people how cool funny, wild, and relatable that he can be. I wanted to use the fact that he was ADHD to show many other people who are also ADHD that they aren't alone. When many people put them down or make fun of them, a character that, that they can relate to. 
So creativity-wise, overall, I give The Blue Time and Adventure an A. There were just so many ideas from the pirate treasure map, the Paradozington pirate captains, the colossal orange cord eel, the different layers of the dark depths of the Atlantic Ocean, the Invisibubble Air Subble, the Tricorgaluta Sea Monster, the La Baiana Rica, and so many others that we just can't fit into 20 minutes. I just tried to be really creative with all of it, especially the storyline, which eh, was a little slow in part. As for the overall grade of it, I'm going to give it a C-. minus. Like I said before, the storyline is all over the place. The storytelling is slow in parts, and some of the answers I should have given about what was going on in the Blue Diamond Desert, I didn't. Towards the end, I was just ready to have it over with, but I still think I gave a, a pretty good ending. Maybe if I went back and watched it again, I might feel differently, but I'm going to stick with that grade. You may even want to go back and watch it again. You know, Watch it with different friends and see what they think about it. Now I've got a couple minutes to show you some of the props from the first part of part one. Here is Captain Daniel Paradosington's map. My dad, Richard Nix, had made this out of a brown paper bag. He crumpled it up and he singed the edges, as you can tell. And then I drew it and it took me, I don't know, maybe close to three hours to do all the details. Then after that came the Invisible Air Subble, designed by Dr. Emmett Lathrop Brown from Back to the Future. It has a cord that you don't see because I always cover it up from where I'm holding it in my hand. Turn it on there and it's got my big bright headlight for exploring the deep dark oceans. It's just a little rubber flashlight that I got at Wally World for a dollar. Here's the colossal orange cord eel from the end of part one and the first part of part two. It is an Auric XL vacuum cleaner cord. The two prongs there are supposed to be its eyes and a little hole underneath it is its mouth. Then the little notch above the eyes is supposed to be the spikes atop its head. This is the firefly fruit from the Magic Doc segment that happened later on in the Blue Time Adventure. All it is is a regular light bulb with this bit of green paper on top of it for the leaves. When I take the Invisible Air Subble, or in this case, it's just a flashlight, and shine it underneath, look what happens. It glows! So that way I could create that cool glowing effect from a drain in the economy, the DuckTales episode. These have been long burned out, but here are the jellyfish from the dark depths of the ocean. you got the pink one, you've got the bright green one, and then you have the yellow one. Yeah, they like to swirl around like that. And here are the strange flashing ones. These are two rubber spike balls that if you bang them, they glow. Here's the bright lime green, full body oxygenating diving mask. It's about $14, $15 at Wally World. This here is the most expensive prop that I bought. It's a sunken pirate ship fish tank ornament. I paid uh, a little over $30 for this. Sturdy plastic, you know, it's got all kinds of details on it. The other side of it, the kind that you see in the episode. Then it's the wooden box that my dad made for me back in the mid-90s to put my skeleton key collection in it. Here's the lid with two of his 
wood carvings on top and the metal handle. Okay. Got underneath it there. And you have the box itself. And I bought hundreds of gold and silver plastic coins and Mardi Gras bead necklaces, jewels. The Tricorgalutus himself. This was carved by my dad from a piece of cypress wood. See, the three old man's faces there. There's that one there. And that one right here. First, what you don't see is the bottom of it there. See where it says Nix 92 on there? Oh, and one last thing. That was the bright green alien light. Well, towards the end. And there's a look at a lot of the props. Well, as in the whales in the ocean, that took a little bit longer than 20 minutes. So, sorry. I wanted to get all the information that I wanted to give you on the props. And that marks the end of the first ever season finale of Tiny Tie Talk. Yay! And I am so, so, so glad to be done with the Blue Time and Adventure, as is many of you out there, I'm sure. I promise that season two of this and video world are going to be much better. So, have a great night or day, depending on where you are, and be fantastically chipperific. Oh, and don't forget to watch the last little bit after my goodbye. Bye. Hello, it's me, Luigi. <laughs>